Hello, welcome back to the Social Squad Podcast, episode eleven. How are you guys doing today? Doing great, doing great. All right, so Nico, your first time on the show. Introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself. How's it going, guys? Uh, my name's Nico. Um, I haven't been on the show since our first episode that sadly did not air due to technical difficulties. Um, I'm a Barcelona fan and a big English Premier League fan. So you hear me talking about that a lot. And uh, I'm American and Colombian. Nice, nice. John, are you, are you happy about the, the increase of, not motivation, but increase of commi- commitment from the other partners of the, of the podcast? I'm honestly surprised. Um, you can call it stunned as well, but you know, you know. <laughs> stunned's kind of crazy. Stunned's, stunned's kinda a little crazy. crazy. <laughs> yeah, stunned's kind of crazy. <laughs> all right, so we're in this international break. We haven't done that episode in a little bit because you know we've all kind of been a little busy. But international break, Nico. We we were having a conversation about this. You think that England's in trouble going into the World Cup, correct? So, uh, I think tell us why. Trouble, and... trouble is a strong word. Trouble is a strong word, and and that's not what I said. And and um, that's the thing about Ron. Always puts words. In <laughs> that is what you said. That's what you said. No, no, you I said. said, you said, I, said I said. I said. No, I didn't say that. I said. I said. If I were England, I'd be worried. That's what I said. I'd be worried. That's what I said. I mean. If you, if you look at the past couple matches, they lost 4-0 to Hungary. They just lost 1-0 to Italy. Um, before that, they lost to uh, – they tied against um, uh, Germany. Uh, yeah, I would, be, I would be a little concerned going to the World Cup. I think they're in poor form. I think, you know, I think form matters a lot. Going into this World Cup, I think players aren't the same. I mean – and I mean, you made the argument that Maguire shows up, the staff. But I mean, Maguire is just not the same player he was a couple of years ago, right? I mean, it's not the same guy. He's playing very poor. Um, he's not playing at all. He's not playing at all. Actually, actually, yeah, actually that's true. a great point. He's not playing at all. And 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 call me insane, but I mean, players that aren't playing just shouldn't start on a national team. It just can't happen. It can't happen. You need players who are playing and ninety I, minutes I of football. He, I don't think he even called up Ben White. No, he didn't. He was didn't. actually playing. He playing he good. Called, he, he called up. Um, I think he called up Cody over him and um, to more. Cody, and... Cody's in bad though. Cody's been playing decent. No, no I think no, those are still decent players. Uh, playing wrong. right back right now, and they definitely do not need another yeah. right back. That's true. That's that's, right that's back. a that's a thing that a lot of English people are saying, like English fans. They're saying that they called up too many right backs. Obviously, Walker, Trent, Reese, and Trippier. I think that they should only call up Trent uh, Walker. And and Reese personally, like wow. I don't think you need four. Really I don't think count. you need. Four, I don't think you need four fullbacks on a team. And I'm and the only reason why I say three is because I know Walker can play center back. So like he's mm-hmm. both center back and a right back. But besides that, like I don't see the use of calling up Trent, Reese, and Trippier all in the same team personally. Mm-hmm. Like unless one of them's gonna play left back for you, you get what I'm saying. Like if one of them doesn't play left back, then what are you doing with three right backs on your team? It, to me, it just doesn't make sense. And I feel like he could call up but went Ben White instead of calling up Trippier. But obviously, he should drop Maguire because Maguire is just not good enough. It's not good enough, man. I mean, I don't know. Does anyone else have any input? I kind of really get my input. Here. He um he kind of I don't know if you guys watch a game. Um, who did they play against Arsenal? Yeah, against Arsenal. And as soon as Maguire got put in, like it was like everything was just shaky, like yeah. from United. And I'm yeah. like, nah, I think his confidence is gone. And I don't know. I, I think he's a decent player. I still think he can be good, but it's not a main United. I think that ship has sailed for him, at least. Yeah, he came in, he immediately got like a yellow card, and then it like directly led to a goal or something. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, like it's just too bad. It's too, it's just too, it's too bad. I mean, I, I think it's too toxic. He should just go somewhere else, try to – maybe Lester again because Lester needs some help defensively. Yeah, Lester could be. So, maybe, you know, like somewhere else from Maguire I think would help him. But I don't know. I like England. I told I told Nico yesterday I don't think I'm worried about England because I think that they got him better, like, as a team on paper. And I think by the World Cup, they'll be better. And I think, like, they won't be disappointing is all I said. 
because I think we did the matchups differently. And, and again, it, it becomes disappointing because, like, you know, it's all based on perspective, right? Like, we already saw they can essentially almost automatically make it to the quarterfinals and based off right. the teams, just based off the teams they're playing in the fixtures and the way that it works. Um, obviously, they'll make it out that group, right? I mean, and again, obviously, it's a strong word. You never know what to happen, right? Like, you know, yeah. like I said, World Cup's a game of moments. It is. It's a moments game. I mean, <laughs> and you're laughing at me, man. But it's not, listen, listen, and I'll, I'll explain this to the viewers at home. And uh, I was talking about this as another member of the of the podcast here. The World Cup, it's just one moment. It's a one moment game. That's it. That's it. It doesn't matter if you're way below another team in the FIFA rankings. It doesn't matter the form. I mean, it's a game of moments. That's all I'm saying. And uh, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, they should make it out their group. Then they'll play. Um, what do you say they're playing in the, in the quarters yeah. they'll play france in the quarters and then they'll play senegal or ecuador no, no, in the round of 16 in the round of 16 yeah senegal right? ecuador or netherlands or qatar they would, they would play yeah ecuador senegal or netherlands yeah or qatar true because that one one a plays two b yeah and then they yeah then they play france probably so yeah I mean, if you like, go to quarters that's not disappointing i guess but it's just the way their matchup works. That's right. getting them to quarters pretty easily, I would say. And I don't think losing to France makes it a disappointing because France is just a good team, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. We'll see how it pans out. But... So since you want to give the viewers half the story, tell us why you said that it was a game of moments. Tell us where that came from. <sighs> it's a um, very good quote here by Rada. USMNT coach Greg Berhalter. Uh, and I, I don't like the guy. So don't get me wrong thinking I like the guy. Um, he said, I mean, he was asked, he was, he lets you laughing, you're laughing, man. But he, he said, he said, do I believe? He was asked in an interview um, something about like, you believe USK could be anybody. And then he was like, do I believe that the United States, any one given moment in time, can be anybody in the world? He said, yes. And to be frank, I'd have to agree with him, man. I'd have to. I can't. I can't. Say, I couldn't sit here and look at you and say that we versus a team. We don't have a chance. Everybody has a chance. Everybody, it's a game of moments. It's a game of moments. That's it. That's it, man. I agree. All right. Well, staying on USA, um, you watch a game against Japan, right? Of course, of course. Tell us, tell us what what went wrong that game. Like, <sighs> wow. Yeah. Where do I start? Everything. Oh my. I, everything. I, moments, mean, I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. I just know that they played that. Uh, I, I woke I up. The only, reason, the only reason I, I, I probably wouldn't have woke up for that game because it was really early, but I had to go in for work since I work like 8 to 5 now or whatever, 7 to 5. So it was around that time. But anyways, um, wow, where do I start? I mean, just alone in the first half, we lost possession of the ball in the defensive half like 30-something times. And by the end of the game, we had lost possessions in our defensive half 54 times, which is insane, insane. Mm. Um, mm. Uh, I think it's unacceptable. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you one of the big issues actually that happened. Um, and the reason that I feel that we lost is I think it's squad selection. I mean, you, you're, you're starting, you're starting guys like Aaron Long and Walker Zimmerman. I mean, those are players that are starting the MLS, you know what I mean? But, I mean, I don't think those are players that should even be, be sniffing the starting 11. If I mean, not them, have, who though? Like, I mean, there's Vickers? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're going to laugh at me. But Is he Cameron Car- Yeah, Cameron Carter Vickers oh. starting a week in and out, for, week in and week out for the Scottish Prem. Um, and then, mm-hmm. I mean, obviously from there, you got to pick a second one. So uh, personally, I, Cameron Carter Vickers is hurt though. So that's why he's, he's not playing. But um, the second one, and frankly enough, not called up, crazy enough, Tim Ream, center back from Fulham. Starting in week in, week in and week out in the hardest league in the world. And he wasn't called up. I hope he gets called up for the World Cup spot, but he was not on this call up. But instead, he decides to start these guys. And those teams that they're in, they're in Nashville SC and New York Red Bulls. They're not asked to play out the back. And the way Greg Berger Halter wants to play, he wants to play at the back. Play out the back, pass it around. And if you got Aaron Long, Walker Zimmerman starting all your plays, you're going to lose the ball. So, I mean, that's just how it is. And other players were just didn't step up to the plate. Weston McKenney didn't play good. I mean, he literally had a pass that directly led to a goal and didn't run back. I mean, it's it's just bad football. But we have no tactics and we need a better coach. To me, we he's like players. he's like a question mark because last year, um, he's like up and down. Like last year, um, for Juve, like 
two and two years ago, he had like a horrible first half, and then he would play good in the second half. Last year, he had a really good first half, horrible second half. If I'm getting my like my years right, so like and like sometimes I feel like I watch him, and he's like the best player in Juve. But then sometimes I feel like I watch him, and he's like he's just not like doing good. Like he's he might as well just not play because he's playing awful. So like, is that something like you worry about consistency from all your players? And obviously, Pulisic isn't playing. Right, like he's he, and it's now that they're playing a four to three. He might, maybe he'll play more, but I don't know. Or not four to three, four two three one with Potter. Um, so I mean, you got Pulisic missing. Um, I'm trying to see what else. McKenny is all right. Like, is that something you're worried going into the World Cup? Definitely a concern. Uh, definitely a concern. You want your players to be playing, you know, every week going into the World Cup. Uh, going into any international break, you want them to be playing. You know, sadly, Christian Pulisic isn't playing, but um, uh, you know, I still think he's he's our best player, and he's got to start for the national team. He may not be getting minutes, but we know the quality he has. So yeah, it's concerning. It's concerning. I, I can sit here and tell you, I'm, I'm not worried that you know we have some players not playing. But so talking about Pulisic, we we didn't have an episode since this happened. Um, obviously, Tucho got sacked. Um, right. Mr. Potter said now. Um, I wanted to hear from Guti or John Joe, whichever one of you guys wants to go. What what are your thoughts on, on the whole second situation? Um, with Chelsea and how do you think they'll do with, with Potter in charge? That was a terrible decision to sack him. It, I don't even know. Like like yeah, he wasn't like playing great by any means, but like just look at his career stats with Chelsea, it doesn't make any sense to get rid of him. Like you just kind of gotta give it patience. But I think that's, um, I don't know, that's just kind of like the Chelsea lifestyle now, right? Like they just kind of pick their managers and then they throw them away not too long after. It's a little weird. Uh, We'll see what happens here with Graham Potter. Uh, I hope he does, you know, he does have maybe, I guess you can say a more dynamic play style. So that would be kind of fun to watch. Um, But as far as Chelsea stands, you know, they've always been kind of like a defensive-esque team to me, so. We'll see how the transition goes. Um, I think they'll do good, though. You know, like, uh, they they just have a good team. What's know, good? At, at that sort – what do you mean? Like, what's good to you? Or what definition do you, would you say? Like, you said they'll do good. Like, okay, so what were your expectations? Third place at is the good enough. Season? Okay. Third place is good enough. Uh, hopefully not a third place okay. that is, you know, like not too far away from first and second, but – if Liverpool and Man City play as we, I don't know, as we, you can say expect, right? Because that's why is Liverpool in usually... conversation? Yeah, why? I'm, well, Liverpool's I'm... in a conversation because they have been for the last like three years. You know, like they've always been better, not always, but they have been better than these so other teams that. by a long shot. I mean, <laughs> I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that they're amazing now, but you know. They're definitely still better than most teams in the league. But anyways, uh, as long as Chelsea gets third place and that third place isn't like uh, like a barely third place sort of thing, if that makes any sense, I think that's like good enough for them, you know. Um, it, it's, it's just kind of weird because they're obviously a team that's capable of doing a lot, but you never know what you're going to get from them. And sometimes you feel like, Sometimes you feel like they can go further than they actually can and they don't end up achieving that sort of, you know, status. Kind of like Man City in a way. Except Man City is actually, like, winning stuff, at least in the Prem. But, yeah. Yeah. What about you, John? Do what are, I, I mean, do you have the same thoughts as Gucci on, on Tucho being sacked? Or? I don't know, man. Tucho has been poor since last season in the league. I mean, if he, if they didn't get that big ass gap in the first half of the season, like they would have been mudded. Well, well, we can't say that. Of. We can't say that. Like we can't say that. Like he, he got the gap. He, he, like no, I know, but like I'm saying, like he, he did got get the, the gap, gap, right? He got the he gap. Could've... He got the gap. But if he if he didn't get the gap, if the other teams weren't playing as bad as they were, that gap wouldn't be there. And that's then he would have been fair. screwed in the second half. Right, that's but I just fair. don't think that's like, fair on Tucho. Right? He, he, he was just like, he, he was just mudded. He was mudded. Listen, he, well, he, also, he, had, he had a lot of things going on too. I mean, like like the players mentally had a lot of stuff going on too. Like it's you get what I'm saying? Like 
you know, they, they okay, couldn't resign but, a lot but of then players. The, the new season starts and then what? The new season. They're playing bad, but you just got to be now. patient with them. Like last year, I mean, <laughs> last year, listen, Tucho. If you're too patient, then you're down too deep, man. You are. And then nothing changes, you're down too deep. Right. But what like, can you do? You could wait at least. Football. You have to, you could wait at least to January. That's what they did with Lampard. When Lampard yeah. was having the mudded season, they waited till like January, February, and then they sacked him, and then Chucho came in and won the Champions League. So, man, you so, can't convince me that sacking him was a good idea. If he was like this, like as he was before he got sacked, if he was like that for maybe three more weeks, yeah, by all means. But it's just too early, dude. It's too early. Like, as Chelsea, what do you want to end up happening? You know? Like I said, they have a good team, but realistically, you're probably not going to win a league regardless, right? I think it, you have enough time to wait those extra couple weeks to see if anything really changes. I think Chelsea can afford that. If it was City, for example, well, there's no way they'd get rid of Pep, but let's just say Pep is having a terrible stretch. Like, no, you know, like something has to change because it's City. But like Chelsea, you're not going to get anything out of them higher than third place. In you know what I presume was going to be the ending table. Yeah. Um. No. Well, I had hopes for Chelsea. I thought this year. I mean, I did think the, this year Liverpool were going to take a step back because they did lose Bonnet, and they're just not the same team. I just don't right. feel the same team coming from them. But I'm with John Joe to the point where actually, like, I'm thinking about it. Like, maybe sack him. Like, it's it's not a horrible decision, honestly. But I think. And here's why. I think this decision was made before the season started. Like, I think this – the pick, or I don't think they would sack him. I think him and Bully, like, as reports say, they weren't getting along. And I think he had a decision made with Tucho that he was going to sack him if he had a bad start, and which he did. My only problem with that is if you're going to have that idea of sacking him, then you should have sacked him. At the before no. the season started, before the season yeah. started, I think. Yeah. Now was, I understand why he did it. Even worse though, it, it would have looked worse, super though. bad because yeah. Pete fans would have been like, "Whoa, like what the heck? Like he is our Champions League man." And, I, and even now, like fans were so mad that he got sacked. But I think it's not about them sacking; it's just about how quickly they do it, right? Like they don't give mm-hmm. they don't give you a chance to to recover, right? I mean, they're yeah. all, they're tied on points with with Liverpool, right? You don't see Liverpool sack, or they actually have one more point than Liverpool. You don't see Liverpool sack and Klopp. And I know it's a little different, but like no one's even throwing the idea out there that Klopp's gonna get sacked this year, unless things go really really bad. I just thought that they should give him time to recover. I mean, you've only played what I'm looking here six games. Yes, you did bad in the Champions League. I'm not gonna say like I'm not gonna say that you didn't, but. Yeah, dreadful. Six, after six games, like that shouldn't be your cut line. Your cut shouldn't be six games in, and then you get mm-hmm. sacked if you if you if you only have ten points. Yeah, like, and that's just, and I think, and I mean, they were unlucky some games. Like they should have beat Spurs. Um, they had chances to beat Spurs. The Leeds game was yeah. awful, and the Southampton game was bad. But besides, like just those two, like besides the Spurs game, only Southampton was be Southampton and and Dynamo Zagreb yeah, were the only two games. That I'm like, wow. Oh, Sorry, I didn't want to cut you off, but no, you're good. Um, I was like thinking of something. Um, I definitely would have waited a little more because if you think about it, and I don't want to say bad teams because I don't think there's any bad teams in the Prem, but teams that were not doing good, um, or teams that are not high quality teams so far this season, are I mean, are the teams that they beat West Ham, Leicester, and Everton's actually not doing too bad. They're actually doing pretty decent. Um, I would say considering last year and how things went and a lot of people that they lost. Um, so again, I mean, I would have wanted to wait a little bit because they're beating the bad teams, but they're losing against decent slash mid teams like Leeds and Southampton and stuff. And obviously they're doing poor in Champions League, but I think Champions League is, is a completely different story. And, 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 you know, I'll refer back to, to the moments. I, I would even argue Champions League's game of moments as well. Oh, my God. Call me insane. I mean, what are you with moments, I, man? Listen, 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 listen. <laughs> call me crazy. I'm just saying. I mean, Champions League, we've seen upsets. We've seen it left and right. So, Premier yeah. League is a consistent competition all year round. I would have liked to see a little more games. Maybe, like Kuti said, like three more weeks or something. Just see if he can beat those mid-teams. And if he can, then, you know, he's still got it. And it's just a slow start. I mean. But I mean, I think, I think anything, I think anything 
as far as Guti, I mean, Guti said third was good. Definitely. Top four has to be, has to be for Chelsea. Anything else is, I'd say, unacceptable. Yeah, yeah. And about, some um, stuff we, go ahead, Guti. What were you going to say? I, I was gonna, I was gonna say like I was I'm agree with Nico that some games are moments, but I think Champions League is also consistency basis playing. Like, I think you get yourself to the moments. Like you have to be good enough to get yourself to the moments. Like for example, mm-hmm. last year Villarreal Bayern, right? The only Villarreal beat Bayern. Um, the first game they drew one one and Villarreal beat Bayern one L at Munich. Mm-hmm. And I think Villarreal playing good across the first game and the second game was the thing that got them to that moment. But that's why I said Champions League is different because it's two games, right? Like, you could have a great game and then just get absolutely hammered next game by a better opposition, right? But I do agree. If you play good enough, whereas difference in the World Cup, in the World Cup, you play one, you play your best game against the best team, you might have a chance to win because it's only one match. So it is about moments, but I think you have to be good enough to get to those moments. That's what that's kind of what I'm saying. But, good to what were you going to say? Um... I wanted to bring up a different team. In fact, uh, we know you absolutely despise this man. Who? Oh, come on. I don't despise him. <laughs> man. Oh, awesome. You listen, hate Mikel we, Arteta. I don't hate no him. I don't reason. hate him. I don't hate him. I don't hate him. And, I, listen, hey, and, I, and I'm still staying on this point. I'm still staying on this point. I'm not getting I know what point. you're going to say. I know what he, you're going to say. I've said it before. He is a good manager. But mm. in my opinion, he's not a great manager. And maybe I'm wrong. Listen, this season, he's proven me wrong so far. He has been going in there and has and has shown up. Now, he still can't beat the big teams. Let's not let's not like big teams in big games. That May United game, big game. They couldn't beat him. It was a big game. It was a big game. Listen, it, but he, I think he's a good manager. I just don't think that our, I, what I said is I don't think Arsenal could win the Prem or get top four with him. Like that's just what I think. If they prove me wrong this season, like. I'll be it. I'll apologize. I'll say that I was wrong about Mikel Arteta, and then that's it. But I don't sleep at night knowing that he's winning, though. Like, I can. That... Yeah, I enjoy them. They play beautiful football. <laughs> Listen, I don't hate. There was only one manager that I tr- that I truly don't like, in in football. Like a, in, that plays that te- that manages a big team. You're so, good. yeah, I, I don't like Klopp. Mikel Arteta. Like I don't like Klopp <laughs> because I just Arteta. think I think I think he complains too much. He complains about everything. When he has, he is in a privileged position to manage Liverpool, which a lot of people aren't. With how much money you give him, and he's choosing to complain about the pitch being dry. Like, don't give me that, please. Don't give me that. Like, mean, I'm, that not trying here. Context, I'm not trying here. I'm not trying here. I'm not. That wasn't out of context. I'm not trying to hear about schedule. Like, I'm not trying to hear about schedule when every when a lot of other teams that have less than him have to do the same schedule. Like, you can't tell me that Sociedad, who has who have a way less budget. Than Liverpool and they're still playing two matches a week and th- into in the match every three days. Like, if Klopp is looking at that, he's saying he has a better team than Sociedad. And Sociedad's the coach isn't complaining about how many games they're playing. So I don't think Liverpool, I don't think Liverpool's <laughs> manager should, because they have a, they have you know the teams. Just... I mean, I think I think that's I think that's contrary. I think I think I think it's just because you know just because something is better for you doesn't mean you still can't complain about it. Because it doesn't make it okay. The schedule is still tight. And, and I'll give this example. I'll give this example. This is going to be a crazy example. But hear me out. Um, it's like, you know, when people complain about U.S. politics or whatever. They're like, oh, if you don't like it, then leave. What? You, you're still, you're trying to make the country better, right? You're trying to make the league better. He's right. trying to speak up for what he believes and why he believes that the schedule is tight. That's why he speaks up. That's why he complains. And, yeah, maybe it seems like he complains. Because nobody else says anything, but everybody recognizes this problem. The schedule's too tight. There's too many games. I mean, it's ridiculous, especially now with this postponement because of the Queen. I mean, they're gonna have to pack more games <laughs> in. I mean, it's, it's gonna be ridiculous. Why is Rob not? <laughs> I, I was expecting to say anything about the Queen today. <laughs> I mean, but no, you're right. But you're right. But you're right. That's a, that's, that's a good point. That's a good point. That's a good point. That's a whole week. Right. That's a valid canceled. point. We're gonna have to fit that in. That's, that's a valid point. That's a valid point. Nah, you you, you make the point. We're, we're I just don't have think... a triple game week in uh, fantasy. Yeah, no, 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 we're, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not, not going to have a triple because we got a draw no. that one week, remember? Probably double. They gave us a draw. Yeah, it'll be double, they but they gave draw. us a draw, so they won't, it won't be a triple. Oh, it'll be a double, though, dumb. for last week. You know how last week only some teams played and some teams didn't? So those teams that yeah. didn't will get a double match week at some point. Right, right, right. Um, 
and I agree with what you're saying. Like, yeah, I thought that example was actually gonna be a terrible example, but he actually managed to make it a decent example. Um, I still don't think he should be complaining. What about the dry pitch, Nico? Um, but like what manager doesn't complain pitch. though? Yeah, you know? what manager doesn't yeah. complain? It's about, just, it's about like it's about what are you it, complaining about though? It's about what you're complaining about. Listen, if there is listen, I'm, show show me a video of Pep complaining. Not only hold up, I'm gonna say if he complains about the ref, that's sometimes every now and then it's different. Like if if the ref gets a really bad call, like I, I, be I, I can give you that. I, no, I, I can give him that when the ref makes really bad call. But he, he has something after every game. He complains about something. He's either saying that the refs are bad, that whatever's off. He's like, what, I remember one game he complained about, like, the offside thing. Like, dude, it's still that computer. What are you going to complain about? It's still that computer doing the fucking lines. Like, you're not going to tell me the lines are wrong. So, like, Man. from that, he just, annoy, he just annoys me. He is the one manager that I don't like. But Arteta, going back to Arsenal, they're playing great. They're, they're top of the league. Top they're of the top of the league and they're flying. They're flying. They, the only bad game that they've had is against Man United. And Man United are flying as well. We can't act like Man United aren't playing like the best or the second best team in the league at this point. Because they are. Wow. They they got four wins in a row. They got four wins in a row, including wins. United over second best what now? Wait, what is the second, second best, best team? team they're, playing, yeah. they're playing like the second best team in the league. Man yeah. City plays golf. No, no Man City actually plays and Arsenal. Golf. Have been playing Arsenal. better than. Wow. No, I don't think I know Arsenal they lost. I know they than... lost them. I know. They right, lost that's them. what I'm saying. But that's one Man game. City. That's one yeah, game. Yeah, right. Compared but, I mean, to okay. Man Let's look at Man United. Who you, who did Man United play? Man United played Arsenal, Liverpool, Southampton, and Leicester. Okay, Leicester. We take it. Leicester, South. terrible. Leicester, Leicester, Southampton. Leicester's they should be able to terrible. beat them. Yeah. They right. be able to but beat Southampton. Southampton has has had a pretty good start to the season. If you, if you look at it, I mean, I'm looking at all the games that they played. Where are they in the they table lost, right now? They they're lost 13. They're, they're 14, 14. They did, but that was the first two games. We're talking about the last four games. I think they have been playing. That's like the second best did team you in the league. they have a good start in their 14? Yeah, for Southampton, that's good. <laughs> I mean, listen, I don't know, man. Listen, Southampton were projected <laughs> to get relegated. They were projected like 19th in the league. So 14th is not a bad start for them. Dude, that's not even that many spots off of being relegated. Right, but like, I'm saying, but it's only three spots. spots. But also, like, 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 let's not, like, we also have the eye test. Let's not act like they haven't played decent. Like, we can't just say that that they just haven't been playing decent. Oh, yeah, they're terrible. I mean, I don't know. But they they did want to bring something. Liverpool and Arsenal. So I think those two wins are better better than Arsenal's last couple, last four, three, four wins. Ron, I wanted to bring something up. Uh, what are you going to bring up? about earlier. So, I think you just don't like Klopp, man. I think you just like to be contrarian. You know, the Klopp is one of those guys that most people really like. And, you know... Yeah, what? he this does. They do. They do really like him. So, I found an article. Uh, Ron, I hate Thomas him, too. Tuchel, Thomas Tuchel proven as biggest... Uh, hold on. Biggest complainer of prem managers with highest excuse ratio. Now, let me pull up the list. That's here. fine. <laughs> what is, it's like, but you're not listening, though. Like, what are they? No, wait, wait, hold on. Tell me each excuse. Let me tell you. Let me tell you, though. Let me tell you. At number one, we got Tucho. I think we could agree he ex- he complains a lot. What? He complains a good amount. He complains a good a 50, amount. 57.9% excuse ratio. I think it's a German thing. And it if we go to 12th thing. place, we see Jurgen Klopp. Wow. Wow. But didn't you say that he was, like, one of the most likable? So if he's one of the most likable, why... Someone's not gonna put him in top ten. Like you're 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 pulling your point different. What? Like Wait, if what people like him, like if people like Klopp, like they're, they're not gonna take excuses. What are the excuses though? That's what I'm asking you. What excuses did they talk about? If you can find the excuses that they talked about, then I can then I can have more of a well, the article's not gonna list you every single excuse. Right. Yeah, right. like so, every manager. All right, so every manager does it does it tell you what it counts as an excuse? Does it tell you what it counts as an excuse? Or is no. just excuses? Okay, so tell me. But like, you're not to know. You're not giving me any. not going to tell you that. That's not how articles work. I'm asking. Not gonna <laughs> like, like, real, like, here's the data. I'm going to show you every. It should. Yeah, it should. It should. Stop. It should like, say. It should say. It should say what goes into it. It should say what goes into it. I'm sure it does somewhere. I didn't read the entire thing. But it should say what goes into it. I mean, I. I well, let's think about the dry pitch. Wow, thing, right? so you're misinformed. No, he. Uh, let's think about the dry, <laughs> the dry pitch thing. So it's true. He did say the pitch was dry. But that's not even like the very first thing he said. Neither was it like a, a standalone thing that he said. Like before he that, he was he was talking about his the attitude of the team. He was like, "Oh, we went into this game and we had a bad attitude." 
and we just we weren't like mentally prepared and we just kind of played into all their factors and then that's when he brought up like the pitch and then just other random bs okay and no but why would you bring up the but, pitch just say that your team played bad that's it like that if listen, that's what if he Bob said, said he that said first his team right. played bad be- so why they weren't ready why add that the pitch was dry that's okay, my problem. Sure. Why the that's pitch? my that's like, my problem. Why does it bother you so much? Where you're like, man, I hate because, this guy because he started talking about the pitch. You know, I just don't like, like him. I don't know. But his complaining just pisses me off more. Listen, but I think he you just, just put more attention to his complaining. Maybe, maybe, maybe. As I, opposed I, to I, other men, I've never heard you talk about Tucho complaining. And I would say, I mean, yeah, I have the article here. It says mm-hmm. he has the highest uh, percentage. But man, I, I'm I thinking about it. And he actually really does complain like a lot, a he, lot. He, he, he always like says something. He compl- okay, but like and Arteta here as well. Um, he supposedly he complains. What was I gonna say? What's the uh, so when Tucho? So does it count as an excuse when Tucho when Tucho blamed the the, the ref? Uh, yeah, against Spurs. Against Spurs. Of course, of course. See, like that's an excuse, but like that's not to me. That's not an acceptable excuse because we all know that the ref was in the wrong in that game, right? Like we know there was some miss. But it's still an excuse though. though. So right, that right. Though. That's an excuse. But like to me, like that's an acceptable excuse because he had a point about the ref. Sometimes Klopp but will like, be saying things about the ref. About the ref like, I don't know. You don't listen. Sometimes the thing Klopp will be saying things about the ref and and like the, the, the ref was good that game and he would still complain about it. That's the thing that <laughs> makes me mad about him. Like the ref will still be good and he would complain about it. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you know, like that's that's yeah. what that's what makes me mad about Klopp. And maybe you're right. I, I haven't made it before. I just don't like Klopp. But yeah, I think a lot of those factors are why I don't like him. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I guess it, it just is what it is though. Like the man, the ref could be good or bad, but either way, it should be counted as an excuse, right? Like, no matter how bad or good the ref is, sometimes man, if you play, if you play, listen, if you played better, you would win. There you go. That's it. That's right. kind of like there's really no Simple there's man. no in between for that. Whoever right. wins is a team that played better. If, uh, throughout the entire game, maybe not. Uh, Nico said, so thing of moments, whatever the fuck he said, you know, maybe they just had better moments. Like Japan had two better moments in the U.S., you know, yeah, stuff like I mean, that. I mean, I, I and, and and I'll bring this up just just for a little bit of reference, man. <laughs> listen, listen, good thing, good thing, okay. good thing, good thing said this, man. I really liked that he said this. He was like, he's like, they would have played better. You know, it's simple. Listen, man, listen to me here, and 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 just remember this. Football is simple, man. It's a game of children. It's a game of children. It's a, it's a game of children. I honestly really know what you're saying. so many things, man. Listen, I don't know. Listen, 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 listen. It's listen, listen, listen. My coach he t- told me this growing up, man. I played club mm-hmm. and travel ball, and uh, and high school ball, man. Just listen. It's 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 simple, man. It's a game of kids. It's <laughs> it's listening. one two. Listen, listen. It's one two passing, and you know it's direct passing. Let go of the ball. And, and get upfield and score you know it's a simple game i mean it's it, you either look and you either score them or you watch them be scored on you man that's it's just that simple man and 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 that, that day that day they just they can do it can pull through man and that's just how it comes that's just the cookie crumbles i mean that's just how it is yeah Nico's getting out of pocket, man, with this, with this, with this every, every <laughs> moment. Man. I quotes from every <laughs> no, I didn't even say the moments thing. Guti said it. I don't think the Premier League is moments because it's consistency throughout the season. So it's different. I, I just said Champions League and World Cup is moments. Wow. At least we're not too far away from the World Cup, so I'm excited. I'm actually very excited for yeah. the World Cup. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm excited because it's going to be the last one um, with 32 teams. I'm sure you guys yeah. say. Man, that I'm thinking, man, the sticker album is kind of gonna go crazy on 2026. Yeah, it's gonna. Yo, it's gonna go stupid on 2026, man. They found a way to get more money out of us, man. It's too much. All right, so yeah. One one quick thing before we um, no, we said we're gonna do a little short episode. I mean, there's there's some other things going on at 1 p.m. (laughs) But all right, so next weekend, this weekend, October 1st and October 2nd. We got two big games. Um, we got North London Derby, Arsenal against Tottenham, and we got yeah. Manny City against Man United. Um, let's talk about those two before we leave here. That's crazy. Those are big games. Um, crazy games. All right, so let's talk about the Arsenal Spurs game. It's uh, Arsenal against Spurs at, Ar- at um, the Emirates. I think Arsenal won this game 3 2. I think they pull away. 
Arteta has been a good manager at um, the Emirates against Spurs. I don't think he's actually lost against Spurs at the Emirates. So I think that Arsenal going to go ahead and take this win. 3-2. 3-2 or 3-1 Arsenal, I think. Are you asking for predictions or just like... Just yeah, I'm telling you. Thoughts? Just give me your predictions and thoughts about the game. Oh, I, just gave you- uh, I also think Arsenal wins, like for sure. Um, for sure. For sure, it's not crazy. No, I, it's easy. I don't think it's very crazy at all. They're the sure is aggressive. team that's top of the league and they're playing home. <laughs> you know, I don't I really don't think there's Spurs are third though. I, Spurs are only one point behind. Sure. No, I'm not I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna disagree with that. It's obviously true, but I just think that they're home, they've been playing good, and I don't think they have a I think they're in the right position to win. Now the thing is it's it's just Arsenal's defense. So they have a good defense, but for some reason they find a way that when they concede, it's typically something that is super, not super easy, but relatively easy to defend or something that they could have gone away with, right? I don't know why that happens so much with Arsenal, but it just kind of happens with every team at some point. I wouldn't say they have a leaky defense, but sometimes it just kind of is like that. And the weird thing about Spurs is that once you let one goal in from Spurs, like it'll just keep coming like that, right? I mean, you know, we just saw that in this last match. Sun came off the bench and just calm hat trick in like you know 30 minutes. That hat trick was insane. Now we have about that. Terrible. Happy about that? <laughs> oh, I definitely wasn't. I had to go against an FPL, but um yeah, Lester's terrible, don't get me wrong. But I, I just don't know, man. I really do not know. But definitely Arsenal's gonna win. I don't know how much. I guess I'll just go three two as well. I really hope it's three two. I would like a banging game. We had three two. Arsenal. Yeah. Nico? Um, honestly, man, um, I think they tie this game. I think uh, I think they definitely tie this game. I think they tie – I actually think they tie this game um, with the run freeze or – No, he's good. No, I, I think I'm good. Okay, wait. Am I freezing? Okay, I don't know. Okay. No, you're good. Um, I'm good? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, I think they tied this game. I think this game ends up being 2-2. You could say maybe that's a high-scoring game, but I don't think either def- – actually, 2-2 could be a little aggressive, but I think it's 2-2. I mean, if you look at their average – Get through the whole recording. Yo. Look, look Yo, he came back this... with the same goddamn Oh, no, no. I, it still says recording. So I'm I'm not not recording. Sure what you're I think we're good on the recording because I think it's just uh, recording, but I don't know. It kicked me out for like a second. For some okay, reason. okay. Um, I was just saying, I think, okay, I do think this game finishes 1-1. Um, I think they're both very high ranked. Um, I was just looking at this. Arsenal was ranked in fourth in goal scored per match, 2.4. Obviously, that's against, you know, other opponents. And then um, Tottenham is ranked at 2.6 in average goals scored per game. And I think easily is aggressive. I think that's crazy. I think that's actually insane to say that. Um, if you look at the points, like Ron said, they're only one point off. Right, Ton is one point off, and even more interesting, not only one point off, they're only one goal. They actually have one more goal than Arsenal, and obviously it's not about goals, it's about points, right? But I mean, I think that's a tight, tight game, super tight game. I think finishes one one, um, and yeah, tight as they come. Hmm, John Joe, I think it's gonna be two two. Does it? Does it? Two two. Wow, and another tie. All right, and let's talk about the last one. Man, Man City against Man United. That's um, that's um, it's it is at um, death yet. Yeah, yeah. Well, Man City's taking it, man. I don't think that's really a question. Yep. Three one. I think, know that. I think honestly, I think this this I was not gonna classical. I think this derby is gonna be like the best derby we've had in years, personally. Maybe. Could be. They're playing like I good. think, Probably. I think Man United are playing good. They're playing good, and I think like Man United have like this aggressive thing about them. Like they got Anthony, which he's not like he's not gonna be Pidget's like finish. he probably shouldn't have said that. I probably shouldn't have said him first, but um, <laughs> let's say like they got Casemiro, right? Sancho. Like they got Casemiro Sancho. in. Um, I said they got their fight back. I think this is. I think this is gonna be a dirty, like Sancho. not dirty, dirty match. I think it's gonna be a rough match. All right, Sancho, damn. I think it's gonna be a. I think this is gonna be a rough like 
you know, kind of a real, real fight, a real fight for the win, in my opinion. Honestly, man, um, I think it has to be three one. Has to be. Has, has to be, be right. Has to be. I mean, it has to be. You, you look at the stats. Let's 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 you know. Let's walk through the stats here. Uh, Man City's ranked first in the league in goal scored per match, averaging three point three goals per match. Right. That's what they score on average. I think they can do that again. Three goals. I think that's doable. You know, you got Erlen Hanan, uh, uh, Bernardo Silva, Kevin De Bruyne, Gundogan. I mean, there's players playing great, great football. Yeah. On top of that, add on top of that, they also have the most clean sheet to the competition as well. So, I mean, I don't think they keep the clean sheet against Man United. Why? Because it's the Manchester Derby. On top of that, Manchester United averages 1.3 uh goals scored per match so i think they definitely get one in against men city it's pretty bad it's pretty bad but this was before you know the adjustment um and stuff uh with anthony and and everything but i think they definitely get one and i think man city gets three and um yeah and i mean you got erlen holland with 11 goals in the league i think he definitely gets one in you know against veron and and martinez first big test first big test could be, could be. First we'll big see. test after. We'll see after if he's a diamond or a pipe man. We'll see. Well, wow. that's the my, my, I love that quote. Pressure. Hey, listen. Yeah. Pressure makes diamonds or bust pipes. We'll see. We'll see what he that's is. That's what, what it is. is. It's true what it is, man. John All right, Adam. John and Guti. Yeah, we have to say we haven't got any score predictions yet. I already said three one. Three yeah, one. Good. Um, I don't know. I think it'll actually be a really close game. Uh, City four <laughs> 0 Wow, you're out of pocket. You you're have no pocket, respect. Man. It's you a Manchester no Derby, man. Yeah. Wow. It is remember the Derby. This. Remember this moment. Remember this. Wow. For now. For now. Right. <laughs> remember this. Remember this. It's crazy, it's crazy. But I thought I was stretching with three one. Four nil is crazy. Hey, you guys, you guys want to see Sancho real quick? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I don't even give a prediction, but I think it's, I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be uh two two one two one Man City. I like two one as well. I was I was debating two one and three one. Yeah, yeah like that. Tell me three one. I think I think it'll be I think this is what's gonna happen. I think Man City is gonna go up two now, and then Man United is gonna get one back, and then Man City is gonna control the rest of the game. Like I wouldn't be surprised if Man City try to make it a boring derby. Personally, uh, I mean, but. All that matters is the points at the end of the day. It is. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. All right. Um, I think that's going to be it for us today. It's going to be a short one. Um, I guess we're waiting for... Oh, wait. Good TS, Sancho. Oh, I just... Wow. Sancho he's disappeared. Wow, he's got that. He's a ghost. <laughs> wow. Hey, all right. Bomb. All right. So, we see... Um. All right. <sighs> that's it from, that's it from, that's it from <laughs> us today. Um, have a great rest of the weekend. Um, Nico, tell us what you said about the Dolphins real quick before I let you go. Oh, I thought this was football talk, man. Let me know what you said about the Dolphins, man. Say it. Say it. I want to have it on recording. It's going to sound crazy. It's going to sound insane. Insane. But you know what they say, man. The craziest ones to say are the craziest ones to do it. And just listen. (laughs) Just listen. Just hear me out. Hear me out, man. Hear me out. (laughs) <laughs> that's, that's, what I say. <laughs> that's a good thing. Listen, that's your problem, good thing. That's you on this. Listen, listen, okay. Put that to the side. Just listen. Cut out you, listen. Man. If the Miami Dolphins, my Miami Dolphins, win the game today against the Buffalo Bills, I'm telling you right you now, right now, we are winning the Super Bowl. You heard it here first. If we win today's game. I told you, you heard it here first. Why Why are you so convinced that they have to beat the Bills? The Bills are the best team in the league. They have the best, they have the best team in the league. They're, they're top three offense in the league, top five secondary. They they are the best team in this league, and they're looking they're good. The they're blowing teams the out of the water. Yeah, they're looking mm-hmm. good. So I'm telling you right now, we beat them because here's the thing. Here's the thing, and, and, and I hate it. I hate it. People are just discrediting what the Dolphins, what we did last week. People are saying the Ravens secondary, this, that, this, that. I don't care. You still need to be good enough to put points on the board and move the chains. And that's what we did. I don't care. And I, and we do it this week. We'll show everybody that we can do it again in a consistent basis. And issue. we're winning everything. Oof. I don't, I'm not really good. You with know what, Nico? I don't care. Wow. All right. That's it from us. <laughs> we can't. All right.
Have a good rest of the weekend. We'll see you guys next week. Bye, everybody. All right. Peace. Goodbye.